Good afternoon, everybody. It is October 26th, and the market is starting to get scary. Or is it? I don't know. Anyway, it's Halloween this weekend, and uh, I am dressing up as Tali. If you don't know who Tali is, go to YouTube. So I wrote a pretty expansive retirement income options uh, last night and this morning. Put it out there. Um, I added some covered call ideas because I think that that's probably the best thing you can do on a lot of positions right now that have appreciated. I repeated the Nutrien call. Uh, it's still in play from last week. Travel America, same thing. I added Mosaic, even though I took it off of VSL a while back, just in case anybody had it. It's way up here. It's been range bound for years. So it's at the top of the range, probably a good time to write a cover call. AMD, I know people like this stock, I do too. Heck of a run. I remember when this was five or $10 a share and I bought it and doubled my money and then I let it go. Another case of not riding your winners. Uh, but this is what it looks like when it's usually time to sell. It's just a little too vertical. I don't think you're going to see a gigantic correction, but the range is very wide. They have big money gunning for their markets. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, the world changes. So I don't know how far ahead AMD is on certain things, whether they can be caught quickly, but the whole semiconductor space is high. So if you are more an income investor that just likes some growth with it and then selling a covered call here probably makes some sense just got overbought on the weekly but i wouldn't write a covered call against your entire position so if you have three or four or five hundred shares sell against one or two hundred or three hundred shares you know only partially the third or half of the position again it'll depend on your risk tolerance but this is a heck of a heck of a rally after this jitterbug here took off, I can see it consolidating. Remember, a cover call doesn't mean you think it's gonna fall, it just means you're neutral for a while. If it does fall, hey, you mitigated your, your risk. And if it chops along, you gain some income to boot. Brookfield Asset Management, haven't been in this for a while, but I know some people are. If you take a look at this chart, again, very similar to AMD. A lot of these stocks move in the same way Got to make you think, hmm, the market's not really discriminating against different things. So again, I could see some very serious chop uh, and it could even fall back into this range. And again, Armageddon scenario down here. Cash secured puts. I hope that you have your kazoo uh, because it is going to do pretty well. And I started to show that this week. Uh, I don't think you've missed it. It's only like eight or nine bucks right now. And I, I do expect this one to get into the thirties, probably relatively quickly, two, three years. So if a triple in two to three years is, you know, fun for you, then I think you need to have a starter position. And this has just been great for selling puts. I've had two puts already expire. And I think the third one will expire down the road. So go ahead and sell the January 750 puts for about a buck. And hey, that's great. Make sure you have a starter position to go with it. Uh, if you don't understand what Kazoo is, take a look at Carvana, pretty same thing, uh, bigger market potential. And I think that uh, they will expand their offerings over time. It, it makes sense to me that uh, Carvana and um, Kazoo act as hubs for new car sales at some point as well. Uh, we will see, uh, I just don't see all the secondary new car brands uh, having the dealership presences that your, that your bigger car dealerships do. I know people will probably go direct to Tesla to buy. However, you know, I don't know that that's true for your bottom 10 brands. You know, I think it's really the top three or four brands that are going to dominate the market. You'll have Ford, GM, and Tesla. Um, I could see, I could see uh, Chrysler getting in bed with Kazoo, and um, you know it really is just a way for the car manufacturers 
to reduce the middleman expenses and to control their inventory better. Get some delivery done for them. I just see a lot of things that Kazoo and Carvana can do in the future, but Carvana is priced for it already. Kazoo, you know, European company, Middle East company, Americans just are ignoring it. The stock just on the earnings, even without multiple expansion, even without any meme stuff, it's going to be a $30 stock and it probably is going to go to 60, 70, 80, or 100. It, it's just got that much upside. The more I learn about it, the more I just think, well, this is just like printing money for them, right? They don't have a, uh, a gigantic uh, capital expense because they're not making the cars. They don't have to buy car lots. You know, they have just the big centralized locations. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a good business model. They took something that was very asset heavy and made it medium asset heavy. You know, so our medium asset like depending on which side of the cup you're on. All right, speaking of cars, Ford. Oh, I didn't, uh, didn't, don't, didn't make that bold. I sure hope that you like Ford because I'm telling you what, at some point, the gap between Ford and Tesla is going to narrow. And Tesla is setting up for a classic three waves down in Elliott Wave. And Ford is setting up for a classic five waves up. Now, will they you know, have the same market cap at some point? Who knows? I don't know. I still suspect that Ford gets into bed with more alternative energy companies and we'll see where that goes. They have all kinds of real estate that they can uh, sell or lease out as supply chains move back here because they're not gonna use it all for car manufacturing because electric cars don't require it. So Ford just has a long, long upside. And, and this isn't time frame dependent. I mean, maybe this is supposed to be 2000, 25. I just didn't feel like dragging the chart out that far. Crystal Meyer, for those of you who like the dividends, it's had a nice correction. I mean, it, it ran away from us and now it came back. So I think that you can sell a cash secured put. It gets you an average price of 54 or a little lower. So go ahead and sell the $55 put for a buck or more. It was like a buck 60 today. And if it gets underneath this 54 area and it's put to you, then you have to decide, okay, well, how far down do I let it go before I sell another put or buy the stock? And for me, because I wouldn't want this to be a giant position, I'd probably let this one get put to me if it happens. And then if it happens to go down here, then I sell another put. I don't think I'd buy another share. Uh, and, and I either collect premium or it finally goes back up. But again, another one of these ones is just range bound long-term. But it pays an income. If you sell covered calls and uh, cash secured puts at the right times, you know if you had sold a cover call up here, you'd been way up in the in the green here, and then comes down. Now you can sell the cash secured put. You know these range bound stocks are just great for ebb and flow trading, right? And the cover calls you never really have to buy back in because either your stock gets called away or the stock price goes down and you know, it's just too far away to do anything with. Jumia is a new, another one that I added back in here. Uh, it is so cheap right now relative to what its total addressable market is. This is probably a price based on total addressable market and everybody pretending that it was going to happen soon. Now it's come down, right? Classic, classic, right? That's just classic. And here, here you go. Now it's chopping along. I, I bought a couple of shares and I sold a put. Uh, this is my main trade today. So I really think that uh, getting into Jumia, you know, if you don't know what it is, you need to look it up. I mean, they're going to be an e-commerce leader in Africa and uh, the Middle East. And they'll expand eventually, but you know that's a pretty big underserved area. It's one of the last places on earth for people to have to jump into the middle class. And it's going to happen. And I have a bunch more, just some updates from last week. Ginkgo Bioworks. I raised the strike price from 10 to 11 because there is a ton of interest from strong handed long term investors in these stocks. And, and I'll just tell you, I know the people want to 
say, well, I'm scared and they haven't proven anything to me yet. Blah, 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 blah. If you read up on the companies like I've been doing, I'm just telling you, we're going to have almost no stinkers in here. You know, there'll be stocks that just move along with the market. Uh, but some of these, I mean, there's just so many triples and higher in here. Uh, here in therapeutics, it, it's just going to keep taking market share now. Does it, does it get as big as, you know, uh, other companies? I, you know, I don't know, but it's definitely got 10 bagger potential. I mean, there's almost nothing in here uh, that doesn't have 10 bagger potential. You know, all the, the bad ones can double and triple, you know, and, you know, the dividend stocks are, are, are aren't going to do that great. They're just going to double probably total return in the next five, six, seven years. That's pretty good too. You can augment that with the, uh, with the option selling. All right. Uh, and then all the satellite stocks. Let's take some questions. And my analysis of MP. Well, first of all, Grizzly reports, Grizzly research, uh, they're a piece of shit company that hasn't done anything right really in the few years they've been open. If you take a look at their reports, you can go to their page and it has all the reports listed. And you know, some of the Chinese ones they did all right on. But the American companies, you know, when they when they say that a company is controlled by China, doesn't that just sound like fear mongering? It is. So if you go through these, like I had a chart up for True Leave. And I will pull it back up for you. True Leave Cannabis. So May, December 2019. Um, December 2019, these guys said that this stock was going to get crushed. Okay, well, it went down a couple bucks, and then look what it did. I mean, come on. I mean, that's almost picking the, the, the bottom tick. I'm embarrassed of half a dozen times I've done that in my career. Now, if you go to their website, what you find is they've done it a lot. It's almost like these guys are getting paid to write bear reports on stocks that somebody they know wants to accumulate. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. So now they come out with a report on MP materials and their big, their big claim here is that it's controlled by China. And that is so fucking dumb, I don't even know what to say about it. Look, we all know that the rare earth metals processing have been coming out of China and that they've been controlling the market. The whole point of MP materials is to break into that monopoly and turn it into a duopoly and then let it expand into an oligopoly. And then maybe we'll actually get real competition, but we probably won't because, you know, you don't want to have too many mines going. So this idea that MP materials is somehow uh, secretly controlled by the Chinese it is just off the charts humiliating to think that these guys have any credibility. It's that, it, it's that simple. So when you take a look at Yahoo and you pull up, you know, your, your quick quote on MP and it's down all about five bucks today, you got to laugh. You just got to laugh and say, well, thanks for the second chance. So if, if you're not trying to sell those puts, and MP materials that I have listed on here, the January 30s for about three bucks, and they're pretty close. Um, then I think you're missing the boat. I mean, we might get lucky and they might get pushed into the 20s. That would be outstanding, outstanding. Because at that point, I might put together a pretty novel uh, investment approach. I think these guys are going to make so much money selling magnets for the EVs by the middle of the decade, by 2025, 26, that, you know, the market will anticipate it ahead of time. It's already a favorite of the Reddit crowd who they don't sell. And at some point, this is going to get squeezed up pretty hard. So whatever, you know, if it dips because the traders can force it to dip, then great. But this company has an outstanding outlook because the EV revolution is real. It's coming faster and faster. Take a look at Tesla's numbers. 100,000 car order from Hertz. Now they have to buy, build a factory to fulfill the order. Do you not think that Ford and GM are going to get EV orders from Avis and everybody else? You got Rivian coming out. 
Ford owns 5% of that, by the way. Amazon owns 5% of it. It's going to make a bigger difference for Ford because they're smaller. In any case, I mean, these short attacks are just, you know, some of them are just stupid, to be honest with you. This one is one of them. You know, if, if it comes from, you know, a legitimate short seller, then you have to turn your head and look. Now, you know me, I think the market's overvalued and overbought. Pretty clear that it is. That doesn't mean that it can't stay that way for a pretty long time. It stayed that way longer than I thought it would. I mean, we've known that there's going to be a taper and the market hasn't blinked. So are they going to wait till the market comes out and they look at their accounts and they go, where the hell the liquidity go? I guess. That's fine. We'll see. And then the old men will panic because that's who panics. And, you know, they'll run away because right now the old men are like, oh, I got to keep up. And then they'll start going down. They go, oh, it's going down. It's somebody else's fault. So whatever. And that's true. What I'm saying here is true. That is statistically what happens. Older men sell out. Right? They chase, prove they have testosterone or something. I don't know. But it's the old men who keep trading badly. And it's weird to me that that's what happens. But I've always kind of sensed that that was the case. And then a study comes out and says, yeah, we've been studying this for 30 years. That's what's happening. Older men get, the worse investors they become. Well, don't be one of those guys. Um, somebody says Intel showing oversold on the weekly and he took a starter position at 28. I don't believe that Intel is $28 a share. Well, like 48, is that a typo? That'd be a typo, yeah. Intel is 48. And I had that one up here too a while back. I am CC. Yeah, I like this. You now it's 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 been range bound for quite a while. Yeah, I mean look look where that is at. I think you definitely this is gonna start selling cash secured puts here. I don't even know if I included a cash secured put on these guys, have I? No, I'll have to add one. And I and I and I did lower that a little bit. So I do think bottom fishing is more like 47. But uh, I like Intel. I tell you what, um, this idea that all the other semiconductor companies are going to keep squeezing the market is wrong because you got more supply coming. That's going to take some time. It's going to take some time. And you're going to have inventory clear up in the first half of next year. But, you know, we'll see how long it takes Intel to be recognized for what they're doing, which is increasing the capacity in the market and just being a middleman and taking a cut of freaking everything. Oh, and by the way, they're kind of a big deal in EVs. Yeah, so I have LMT up. And again, I I was looking at the shorter term charts. I wanted to see what it was doing in the short term to, to know whether or not it could really go down here. Because this red line, kind of an important red line. And that's really where the confluence of volume starts to become big buyers. So this is where it happened, came back down, didn't quite get down here because of the massive QE. It probably would have gotten to the red line if it hadn't been for the Fed. Now, can can a lot of these stocks go below the 2020 decline? Man, I don't know. I just don't know. It's hard for me not to buy these guys right about now, to be honest with you. It's It's just such a good company. I'm waiting because the volume, the, the momentum is down, right? You don't buy into down momentum like that. So you take a look at this. You go, well, it's fell off a cliff kind of daily. Can it go a little lower, a couple more days, get down here? Yeah, I mean, the closer it gets to 300, right, the harder it gets not to buy. Well, they are a spectacular company, spectacular company. If you're a dividend investor, you're going to buy it before a growth investor does. If you're a growth investor, you know, it's not what you should be doing. You just buy QQQ or, or, or some sort of fund as your core if you're a growth investor, and then you go out and buy your 20 growth stocks. You know, none of these large cap growth is kind of an oxymoron. The reason why Google and Apple and Facebook and all these companies that are gigantic act like they're you know, monopolistic tyrants, because A, they can get away with it, and B, it's what they need to do 
to keep the growth numbers up. If at any point we actually regulate big tech, oh my gosh, they all can drop 30 to 50% like that. President Biden comes out and says, hey, I'm going to use the, I'm going to direct the SEC to go after these guys or the FCC or whatever regulatory organization oversees them. Oof, 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 oof. Could be a big, big downer for some of these tech stocks. Now, will we ever regulate them? I don't know. We don't regulate the big guys, but maybe. Somebody asked, what about the potential possibility of lasering all those satellites out of the sky? Well, Luke Skywalker, if you have the right X-Wing fighter, I guess you could do that. Do you really believe there's going to be a war in space? Really? And, and do you really believe we're not a decade ahead of everybody else on those weapons anyway? I, I just, I don't even know how to respond to that, to be honest with you. That is, uh, it's like saying, hey, if the end of the world happens, how are my stocks going to do? <laughs> Who cares? Tell me where the corn is. And somebody asked about EQOS. I have no idea who that is. Diginex Limited. I don't know what that is. So I have no thoughts on it. Any other questions? Otherwise, I think that's all we got. Will you buy Facebook? I won't buy Facebook. Did you not see my article? Do you trust this guy? It's one of the biggest pieces of shit in the country. And you got 20 million people jumping over to Truth Social because they want to continue living their lie. And, and, and Zuckerberg saying that he's going to pivot to be the North Star for the youth. Come on. This is the first guy they're going to regulate. This is the first guy they're going to regulate. He is a scum sucker. He's pure scum. He is an Ann Rander who really doesn't have that much talent. He's a taker. Mark Zuckerberg is going to go down as one of the most despised figures in American business history when this is all done and over with, I think. He has no ethics. He tries to hide behind the corporation's amorality. I hesitantly put Facebook on our list because Dave liked it. But I've told you all along, for years I've told you, this guy is just a piece of junk. And the fact that he hasn't been able to really monetize the marketplace on there tells you something. People would rather shop on eBay and Amazon. Now, if you want to go to the neighbor and get something that used to be $200 for $20, hey, yeah, there's some, there's some use to it. It's an online rummage sale. So he's trading in dimes, getting a cut of dimes. Not on much of it, really. Yeah. Facebook has declining engagement and fewer young people using it instagram is their is their money maker at this point for the future and the problem the problem is that young people are fickle and they're going to look at this guy they're going to say tiktok they're going to look at this guy and say snapchat they're going to look at this guy and say next so I don't think I'm ever going to buy Facebook. If I get it incidentally after a market correction because I buy QQQ, so be it. But I can almost tell you that I will never buy it no matter how much I like Oculus. And do you trust this guy? Do you trust this guy even a little bit? Look at him. Do you trust this guy even a little bit to be in charge of a big hunk of virtual reality. I don't. Somebody asked about thoughts on the IRS poking their noses in everyone's bank account for transactions over $10,000. You know, they already do that, right? Just, just pointing that out. They already do that. So if you are laundering money with cryptocurrency, you might not be able to do it much longer. If you are evading taxes on cryptocurrency trades, you might not be able to do it much longer and good. You shouldn't be able to evade taxes or launder money or blackmail people. The bank regulation is good. It's almost always good. When we got rid of bank regulation in the early 2000s, we got a financial crisis. And what have I told you all along? Bitcoin is going to become digital gold. 
and Ethereum is going to become digital contracts. And there'll be a few others that sneak in there. The other 90 some odd percent of cryptocurrencies are going to penny or less because they're fractional. So they might still exist at, you know, eight one millionth of a cent. And the dollar is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger, by the way, because the underlying strength of the U.S. economy and the U.S. dollar is so overwhelmingly strong that if we didn't deficit spend, instead of the dollar being at whatever it is, 90 on the basket, it'd be 150. We have to hold the dollar down. We do it through deficit spending. We tie everybody else to us. It's almost like Alexander knew, Alexander Hamilton knew that that was the right way to do things. Even though in real life, he's kind of a miserable dude. He understood how to build an empire through the banking system. And that's what he did. Listen to the words in the, in the, in the play, in the musical. Well, just sing along and be happy. Or better yet, if you haven't read the Federalist Papers, read the Federalist Papers. I've read them twice. Second time because I had to write a report. I read them twice. And I tell you what, we're an umpire. It's probably unstoppable. We'll always be an umpire. Will there be two or three mini empires alongside us vying for position? Probably. China, lesser extent Russia especially after the fossil fuel age. But Russia's pretty educated, so maybe. In India, India's coming. Just so many people. Europe's just going to kind of float around sideways. And eventually, Japan will lose its edge because they're little. All these little countries have to find a way to become Singapore. Now, Japan can become Singapore with some manufacturing. Don't bother me with bank regulation. We should have so much more bank and financial regulation uh, than we do. It's, it's not even approaching silly. We set up our financial crises by not regulating the banks and the financial institutions. Every single time, that's what happens. First time home buyers are getting priced out. Will there be any impact on the economy? I don't think any more than there already is. Uh, home prices went up, what, 20%? So far this year, that's obnoxious. It shouldn't be that way. But it happened because a lot of people wanted to move all at the same time. And if you caught the Bloomberg article I posted on Twitter, you had three and a half million baby boomers, which I talked about quite a while ago. Three and a half million baby boomers just retired during COVID. They said, I'm close enough. I'll just retire and take what I can get from the government, and then I'll go into retirement. So you had this huge acceleration of boomer retirements, and that's part of the reason we have a, a shortage of labor right now. A lot of them will come back part-time at some point. But why would they do it now while people still refuse to get shots? You know? All right. I don't see much of anything else. So let's call it a day. I'm going to go make one of my Hello Fresh meals. I've been... Uh, experimenting with all these delivery meal things. I tell you what, HelloFresh is okay. Uh, we were doing the three meals a, a week and now we're down to two because we just need the fast ones early in the week. The rest of the week we can prepare stuff or go out. The um, fish from Wild Alaskan Fish Company, it's all right. Yeah, I don't know. I like going to the fish store and picking out what I want. You know, whatever looks good, what's on sale. Man, it's, it's, you're not gaining any freshness. So I'll probably cancel my Alaskan fish thing after the next delivery because uh, I do want to be able to get through the winter. And uh, that would be the one thing I would tell everybody. The, what you have to watch out for is that in the short run, the very short run, like through next summer, supply chains are going to be cl clogged up. But eventually it all cleans up. Inflation is transitory. Deflation is still the big story. That was the big news on on. Bloomberg again today, you know, Barry Ritholtz came out and said exactly, exactly what I've been telling you. Deflation is the boogeyman. Inflation just showed up for, you know, a beer and it'll be leaving soon. All right. Take it easy.